In nature, there are three laws that describe the relationship between the forces that are acting on an object and its motion because of those forces. These are, of course, Newton's laws of motion. Now, these laws can and have been demonstrated in a variety of different ways over almost three centuries. Today I'm going to demonstrate to you each of these laws. Let's get started. Newton's First Law This law states that an object will move at a constant velocity unless an unbalanced force acts on it. Now, as you can see here, the bike is moving along thanks to the force of the man's pedaling, as now coasting along the sidewalk. If there were no outside forces acting upon the bike, the bike would continue to move at a constant velocity forever. But this, however, is not the case here on Earth. Currently, there will be two outside forces acting on the bike, air resistance and friction. Both will make it harder for the bike to maintain motion. <laughs> of course, even if the bike's motion hadn't been suddenly stopped by that obstacle, he would have eventually been stopped by the forces of air resistance and friction, had he not begun to pedal again. Another cool thing about the first law is that any object at rest will remain at rest unless it is acted upon by an external force. Here, once the bat hits the can, it will apply force to the object at rest, causing it to accelerate and move from its current position. Newton's second law states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on an object, in the direction of that net force, and is directly affected by the mass of the object. Stop! Now, the second law is talking about how the different forces acting on an object will come together to become a net force and that object will accelerate in the direction of that net force, and this acceleration will be proportional to its mass. For example, when the man flipped the table, the force of his throw provided a greater force than that of gravity holding down the table. So the net force of his throw is pointing upward, so the table will go up. And how fast it goes up depends on the mass of the table. A heavier table will accelerate slower than a lighter one. Now, because the force of gravity holding down the box is greater than the man's lift, the net force this time is going downward, and the box will not accelerate up at all. Finally, Newton's third law states that for every action, there is always an equal and opposite reaction, or the actions of two objects on each other are always equal and directed in opposite ways. An example of this law can be seen in the game of croquet. Watch. As you could see right there, when the blue ball hit the green ball, its momentum was transferred to the green ball, propelling it forward and causing the blue ball to stop in its tracks, hence the equal and opposite reaction. This can also be observed when someone pushes the crate, as when you push the object, oftentimes you will feel the object pushing back at you, because it exerted a force in the opposite direction of yours. And those were the three laws of motion. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.